All right, so we're doing some training here on how to do workers' comp. So let me get a live example here. Uh, so work comp regulated by the state and by NCCI. NCCI stands for the National Council of Compensation Insurance. And they are kind of like the credit bureau, if you will, for insurance. They help create class codes and rates. Our two main players for work comp that we can go direct are travelers, which you can get right here, and or AmTrust, which you can get right here. Okay. Um, and I'm actually going to click on travelers right now, just for this video here. Um, and I'll keep talking through each of them though a little bit. AmTrust probably a little more broad. They'll do a little more white. Uh, they'll do a little more gray collar and, and contractors. Travelers is primarily going to be more of our white collar type risks. Um, and we this is a chiropractor, which is medical office, which is definitely white collar. So you log into Travelers, you're going to click quote an issue. You're going to go to small business. Click that link. And then after that, you're going to scroll down, you'll click I accept. And then one thing that is kind of nice with Travelers, every company is a little different. Um, once you start to go click start a quote, once you put a quote in with Travelers, you are the agent on it. So in other words, no one else could even quote on this particular risk without getting a broker of record. So there's a lot of carriers that that's certainly the case once you're actually actually the agent. Um, but from this quoting standpoint, that's that's kind of nice. So that you kind of lock yourself in as as that. So um, you just go, you start typing account names. So this, this guy's name is Joseph. What's the Okay, so this guy, good Italian guy, like uh, like my roots here. So Joseph Sicarello, and then it's uh, DCPA. And you'll choose the state. Okay, and then you'll click search. Okay, if anyone was already named with that, again, it would block us out, right? So if, if we saw that already and we tried clicking on it, the system would be like, oh, sorry, someone else is already in there. You need a broker record. So now we'll just click create new account because there's no one there for that. I'm also doing two, and I'll pull this over here because this is a good website. So we talk about this uh, a good amount. This is the proof of coverage database for Florida. And you can literally just Google that. You can just Google proof of coverage database. Um, and that will come up and it'll pretty much bring you to this screen where you can look up any employer in the state either by their name or by their tax ID. Their tax ID is really the best way to do it. Tax ID is kind of like your social security number, it's specific to the business. Assuming they have coverage currently, keep that in mind, they, if they don't have coverage they're not going to show up at all, but if they have coverage they'll show up. So you can see right here there's a few, so we'll click this one. Um, and then it's going to give us prior carrier info. And again, because all this is public record, it's literally going to show effective dates, policy, I'm sorry, insurance company, policy number. If you click detailed coverage, it'll also give you more info, often tell you how many employees they've got, um, and additional info from there. It also tells you the governing class code, and that 8832 is a medical, medical office class code. So that's a really good one. Um, to know the other thing to highlight here is if the owner were exempt, it would highlight it here. So the owner in this case is not exempt. And especially on the white collar stuff where the rate's pretty minimal, like I'll be shocked if this is any more than $700 a year or something like that. In my opinion, it makes sense to add the owner in case they did get hurt on the job. Um, so that way that they were they would have that coverage. So all I'm going to do now is just put in the address, mailing address. I'm getting this literally right, right from the uh, info, the fact finder that we took with the CPA who referred this. Um, phone number, I don't know the phone number right now. And just for sake of the, doing this, I'm just going to put in a, a random phone number. And then you'll click establish account. And then off to the left here, it will tell you and it'll ask you, okay, like what are you trying to do? So travelers can do business auto. They really don't do package or bops here in Florida. Um, they only do um, primarily general liability. They do do workers' comp and they do umbrellas. So I'm going to click on the workers' comp. <clears throat> 
And then once you click on that, and you're gonna go and you're gonna put in the effective date. And usually the, the effective date is gonna coincide with whatever their effective date that they were renewing at. So if they had a future renewal, so in other words, let's say they were renewing in September, October, normally you're gonna true it up with that. In this case, they actually haven't had coverage, right? Uh, in a few months for just some paperwork issues. So in that case, I'm just going to put today's date in. Actually, since it's late in the day, I'll put tomorrow's date. And then we'll just click Submit. And it's going to start asking us a little more detailed info on the business. It's going to want to know payroll with Work Comp again. Um, the big thing is to understand uh, it's a function of payroll. Uh, commercial insurance is always rated on one of three things. It's typically either rated on revenue, payroll, or square footage. And Work Comp is always rated on payroll. So I'm just going to type in here, keyword search. I'll put in medical office. Let's see what comes up for that. And it's found that. And um, now we're just going to try and find the closest closest thing to it. So this is a wellness clinic. So I'm actually typing chiropractor, which is what he is. Let's see if this. Okay. Okay. So here's chiropractor. And again, this is finding the specific class code for them. Also kind of telling you what they'll do and what they won't do. Um, and so we'll click agree. We'll click Physician and clerical. We'll put they are a corporation. Put the tax ID in. Four. And okay. And we've already got the address, etc. It's going to ask is the predominant mailing address the same as the business? We'll click yes. This would only be if the mailing address were different. You're established. I think they've been around almost 40 years. So we'll put 1979. Billing type, we'd almost always do direct bill. Where that's where it'll mail the client directly. And this is asking, has the insurance lapse been canceled? Blah, blah, blah. I'll put yes. Again, we're just going to explain that it was due to billing. Uh, an agent represents carrier billing dispute. Non-payment. We'll just put non-payment first in three years. They've had no claims. <laughs> We're not quoting the auto. They have no autos. Total payroll is sixty-nine thousand. We'll just round it off to seventy. Actually, sorry, the total payroll was eighty thousand. Adding in the owner for the employer's liability, I always do one million, one million, one million. And the reason I do that, a couple things: a, it's very inexpensive to do. B. This is the actual liability that protects the owner in the event of something going wrong. Remember workers' comp, if something actually happens and a, uh, a worker were to try and sue and there was some issue, they got hurt on the job, something happened. Um, that's what workers' comp does. The employer's liability um, also protects them. And actually this little question mark box here will probably give you a good idea. So protects the insured in the event of a lawsuit resulting in damages due to bodily injury by accident, disease, including death, etc. So again, it's the limit of liability that we have on the policy. And obviously the higher the limit, the better the protection. I will tell you most contracts require that. Um, like anytime you see a vendor or a contract requiring that, it will require one million liability. So it's going to say, hey, are there anything on the ineligible list? The ineligible list, and I'll show it real quick. They're normally things that are pretty far off, you know, political campaigns, patrol services, uh, birth control centers, et cetera. You're not normally going to see uh, things like that on there. So we say yes, it means the eligibility. Is coverage requested for all states? Yes. Number of employees on any shift? We'll put three. No subcontractors. Employees don't travel out of U.S. And then we'll click continue. The system, most of these companies now, the system will literally tell us right away whether they'll do it or not, or for whatever reason. This may tell us we need to submit based on their cancellation for their non-payment. It may just kick it through because it's so small. So we'll see, but the system normally is pretty good at telling us right away um, whether whether it's a go or not. Um, and all this is thinking here, and just kind of highlight a couple other things. 
depending on the type of the business, and especially you see when you get into a larger business with more employees, you're going to have different class codes for different employees. So that's good to know. So picture, this is a pretty um, uh, classic one, if you will. So picture a uh, landscaper. So maybe there's a landscape company. I'm working on one right now. So they do commercial landscaping. Well, all the guys that are out in the field are actually doing the cut and blow and actually doing the mowing, tree trimming, and all that. They're going to be at one class code, and that's going to be a higher, higher rate. Um, the girl that's in the office, or the person that's in the office, that's going to be under an officer class code at a much lower rate. Okay. So this is basically saying there's no mod available. Not to overcomplicate things too much, but mods don't normally kick in until ten thousand in premium and higher, and that basically is a, is a way where depending on what. Uh, if the client has had good claims experience where they haven't had any claims, they'll get a credit. If they've had claims, they'll actually pay more. Um, and we're just going to put in the payroll again, the total payroll, and the number of employees. Now, this should be the very last screen again where the system is going to tell us yes or no. Green is always good. It actually even tells us it's within, within our authority. Okay. So if the client wanted to do it, literally we would just start clicking proceed to issue and we're probably three screens away at this point. For now, we'll just click the quote proposal. Okay, you're gonna click on that. And then the proposal is gonna pop up on this little local print screen. And they still do it in like a Word doc. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna pop up in a Word doc. And come over to here. And we'll click Enable Editing. You can see we've got the name of the client. Travelers. Travelers have been around 100 years. AM Best Day Rated Company. You know, definitely gold standard for insurance. $600 for the year. You can see here, based on 80,000, the clerical. Pretty much everything that, that we put in just pulls through, right? And you can see here that the rates are $100. I'm sorry, 38 cents per hundred dollars of payroll. So that's basically how that works. So that's it. That's how to do kind of an overview on workers comp and how to do it and quote it online with travelers. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'm here to help. Dream big and make it happen.